Hello there, friends. Welcome back to another volume of our Redstone Basics here. I am your host, Ramadi. Um, today, I thought we would go ahead and take a look at a couple different things. Maybe some T flip flops, and then I thought we'd go ahead and look at uh, some pulse limiters as well. Um, yeah, so these are um, maybe not quite so basic anymore, but they are certainly not advanced either. Um, what these are, uh, these are some very basic machines that um, you will use a lot in your redstone builds. And um, I wanted to go ahead and knock these out, get them out of the way, um, so that you could just kind of file these away in your bag of tricks. And um, yeah, just have them kind of for your use. So I thought we'd start with some T flip flops. Um, what a T flip flop is, is it is a way to turn a button uh, into a lever. And it works pretty much just like that. Now this is the ye old fashioned out of date uh, model right here. Um, you'll notice hole in the ground, torch in the hole. Um, as this piece of wool right here slides over top of it, that now takes power from the torch and now this is your output. Uh, you could of course have another output right here if we really wanted to. Um, input for this is any of the blocks up on the top. Um, what we're really doing is we are just lighting up this redstone line here on the top so that it will flip these torches off and then when the torches turn back on um, the pistons will go ahead and move like that. So that's pretty much the concept. Um, we can update this one with a little bit of redstone block action. Uh, now we no longer need torch in the ground as the redstone block is just going to give us um, our output. Again, this is basically the same output right there. Inputs are anywhere here on the top. Again, a little bit of redstone dust up on top. Um, primarily where you see the T flip flops used uh, is in the control of doors because um, it's just really cool. Uh, to hit a button and have your door open, close, do whatever you want. Clearly, this is not a super complex door. Um, but yeah, there you go. Um, we can, if you want to, go ahead and build this thing real fast. It's very self-explanatory. Normal piston. Two blocks in the middle. Normal piston. Block of redstone. Um, wool, wool. And then on the top, we need torch here. Torch here. Uh, and then on the top of these, a little bit of redstone dust. So, you know, not the smallest um, of the contraptions. What I like about this one is it has worked, it has always worked, and I believe it will continue to always work. Um, so that's why I wanted to give you this model uh, to keep in your inventory. Um, yeah, because I think when you need something reliable, it's going to go. Now, this guy over here is my current favorite model of the uh, T flip flop. I like this one because it's only one button tall. I'm sorry, button, but one block tall. And um, it uses this neat concept of repeater locking right here to go ahead and flip our output um, on and off. And I just think that's pretty cool. Um, this one is very quick. That one you'll notice is a little slow because it has to let the button pulse go ahead and turn off the torches and then turn them back on. So six or eight tick limit on that depending on what button you use. This one, you do not have to wait on that. It will go ahead and fix itself before your button ever comes back out, uh, which I really like. So um, this is just the same thing right here. Again, we're going to use some repeater locking. Um, so we will, I think, go ahead and build this one as well. Little block here, torch on the side. And then two repeaters just like that. This one right here on four ticks of delay. Redstone dust in the middle there. Repeater, repeater. And then this is the repeater that we're going to lock and a little bit of redstone dust right here. Um, so what repeater locking means is that when you run a repeater into the side of another one, it is now going to lock it. And you'll notice that this signal that is on um, is not affecting that repeater whatsoever. And so if I now put another one there, which this is your output, um, nothing has changed. And, and what this thing is really going to do is when we push the button, then this repeater here is going to turn off just long enough for this one to receive a pulse. And then that will now flip what we're going to do here on the end. Um, just like that. So now we're on. And now again, it'll turn off and it'll just invert the state on that repeater. And then this one here locks it. There you go. 
Love that little T-flip. So that's pretty much that. These are the two that I use almost exclusively. Uh, and really, I use this one almost exclusively right here. Um, as always, there are lots of these things out and about. You know, there are one wide versions. There are tileable versions. Um, I have not run into a case where I've needed that. But um, this is not the end all of T-flips. So you can certainly find things that you want. My goal was just to show you kind of the uh, kind of the science behind them, why we use it, that kind of thing. Uh, I think we've got some pulse limiter action to talk about. So let's go do that. Right then, so pulse limiters. Um, you will use these, I think, quite a bit. Um, specifically for this reason right here, when you have a sticky piston and a block on top of or on the side of that sticky piston, and then run a single tick pulse through it, that sticky piston will spit that block out. Uh, and this is useful in a variety of ways. Um, doors, anything bigger than a 2x2 two two door will most likely use this concept for the middle blocks. Um, there are a lot of instances where it's useful to run a single tick through dispensers, droppers, hoppers, um, all those kind of things. So I thought it was really important to go ahead and provide you um, these pulse limiters. So now the concept behind these is we're going to take a pulse from a button, um, somewhere else in a machine or circuit and we're going to narrow it down to a single tick and we do that like this um, I'm just going to build a little button here real quick so that we can watch this torch and there you go um, so we're taking the six ticks off of a stone button we're going to run it into this thing right here and now that torch is now going to flash off and this repeater is going to delay what happens by three ticks and then that's going to lead to this torch flashing only once just like that uh, and that's what a pulse limiter is you can also build pulse elongators um, and we can do that pretty simply by using a couple more repeaters here in the middle let's stick them all on for delay we'll run a little bit here along the side uh, put our torch back and now let's go ahead and build um, our input again. And so now we're going to get that torch to flash for a long time. So these are not just um, limiters. You can also use these to extend a signal. And that can be useful for, uh, you know, let's say we need multiple time uh, items to drop out or run out of a dispenser. Or even if we just want something to be extended for a certain period of time. There you go. Um, so this guy here that we have just messed about with is the first pulse limiter that I ever built. We do it like this. Block, block, space in the middle. Repeater on three delay. Uh, you will then want to put a torch on a side. Redstone, redstone, redstone. And now a torch on the end. And you want that torch to be affected by both the redstone and the repeater. Um, so clearly this right here then is your output um, and this right here then is your input and as we run this now you're gonna see that redstone flash for only a tick which is kinda cool uh, there are new versions of this I do keep this older version handy um, because it does not have any moving parts uh, and I believe it has worked and will always work the problem with this is the pulse it emits um, used to go ahead and spit this block off of the piston, which we'll do right here. And it actually no longer does that. It goes ahead and it holds on to it now. And so that's why this pulse limiter is a little out of date. Uh, we've got some newer guys over here. Obviously, we showed you this and that goes ahead and spits the block out. And if you've seen the tutorial on my binary counter, um, this is the pulse limiter that we use there. And then this guy over here is a very special pulse limiter. This is actually a limiter that um, emits a, pol uh, a pulse when the piston extends and also when the piston retracts. So you get this action right there. And that can be very useful in of itself especially if we are trying to say um, run uh, a pulse of a certain limit or even um, 
keep it um, limited to just certain ticks. We're trying to run pulses in sequence, that kind of thing. So let's go ahead and build these guys. Um, for the single tick model right here, we are going to want our block with dust on the top. This will then be our input. Um, we are going to need a sticky piston with a block on the top of it. And th what this is going to do is now just run that piston um, for as long as the button is depressed. So we're actually feeding power right here, which is neat. And then um, the block will take a pulse from that redstone right there. And that's how we're going to get it into this repeater, just like that. Uh, and so now this is actually our pulse limiter right here done. Obviously, the output is off of that repeater right there. The piston will take one tick in itself to run. <coughs> and so pushing the block out of the way is how you now receive that single tick on the repeater. Um, we can do a variety of things here if we want to. You can run your block off the side just like this you can run it um, off of the ground right here and any combination of. Um, we can even do something kind of neat like this where we will go ahead and carry the signal down onto the ground using um, repeater into block taking power down here as the redstone and now build a little sequence out here so that we can watch that pulse go ahead and run um, down our repeaters, which is kind of neat. There you go. So our second one here, and this guy is um, not necessarily more involved. He's just a simple um, block first, sticky, sorry, sticky piston on the side uh, and piece of wool right there eventually. We need to go ahead and put a repeater here on the ground. You do not have to add delay to this. Um, there's our wool. And now the way this is going to work is you're going to run your redstone up like this. Uh, and then when there is a block that gets extended, which this one will do, it now cuts our redstone off right there. Um, so if we go ahead and just give power to that piston right there, you'll see how this interrupts our redstone. And now this here on the end is the same concept. Um, except we're going to get two pulses, which is pretty neat. We'll go ahead and destroy that. Add our button, and now you'll watch, you know, as we... Um, sorry, I did not do this right. We need the piston actually on the side. Uh, that's okay. That is okay. I'm not going to worry about it so much. We will run our redstone out like this, and we're going to build this same little guy right here. And now we'll watch two pulses run down. There you go. And that's just kind of fun, I think. Add our button right here. So there you go. Um, I am going to end it there, I think. I have recorded this thing a total of four times now. Um, I've been unhappy with each of the other recordings. We're going to hope this one is a little better, especially at the end where I stumbled. But um, definitely keep these handy. Um, these are some small machines that you will use uh, quite a bit. So, again, with the pulse limiters, there's a lot of these guys out there. Um, this is not the all in, uh, end all be all. You can find things that will work for yourself. These are just the ones I have found to be most useful. All right, thanks for listening, and I will see you next time.